What was your reaction when you heard that there were zero active cases of CO19 in New Zealand? Oh, me? I did a little dance. Is that gonna be like the new dance craze? It's gonna be like the CO19 shuffle? Like, what would that even be like? It would be like, six feet now, y'all. Freeze! Everybody wear your mask! <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Easy Peasy. My name is David the Baker, and today we're gonna be taking a look at r slash made me smile. It's some pretty easy content, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the wholesomeness. Ask me anything. Make yourself uncomfortable. Why is everything about race? Black lives matter or all lives matter? Does institutional racism exist? White privilege, fact or fiction? What can I do? Why are people angry and rioting? Why are there black ghettos? My experience with racism? What is unconscious racism? I mean, you gotta love people like this. They open themselves up for conversation so people can ask questions and learn from their experience. It's just a good experience. Maybe not the most comfortable experience, but a good one nonetheless. Finished product, 17 artists from different walks of life in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, that's where I'm from. Oh, and that is just beautiful. <laughs> Tapping on the ATM. All right, bucko, just give me your money and... Account balance, negative $2.69. LOL, you're broke, boy. Oh man, hey man, you wanna come over? I can get you some chicken nuggets or something. <laughs> yes, please. Naked Australian man wrestles giant python to save his kitten. There was no way I was gonna stand by and let it eat the kitten. Oh man, you gotta love stories like this. It's where regular people just turn into straight up superheroes when they have to save their pet. I mean like one second you're a regular guy and then the next your pet's getting attacked and then boom, you're Superman. In 1981, a pediatrician saved the life of a 3.2 pound premature baby boy by working around the clock and beating the odds to stabilize him. In 2011, the same pediatrician was pinned inside a burning vehicle after a car collision, but was saved by a paramedic who turned out to be the premature baby he saved 30 years earlier. Oh wow, the odds of that happening are astronomically slim. But spiritual beliefs aside, it's kind of nice to think that, you know, you can put good into the world and you can get good out of it. Small pupper napping on a banana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet dreams, you precious angel. My dad is fully recovered from battling CO19 for a whole month. He wasn't gonna let Cough Cough Sniffle take him down. Nah, 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 he's, he's a warrior. I told my grandma I was bisexual and she made me this. All right, this is really sweet, but it could also be a double-edged sword. Now every gift grandma gives you is gonna be rainbow themed. She gives you a cookie, boom, it's a rainbow cookie. She gives you a sweater, boom, it's a rainbow sweater. You, <laughs> you can't win. Ah, well, would you look at that beautiful lawn? Black Lives Matter. Because here at Easy Peasy, we really do value black lives. I mean, if that wasn't true, then I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> Cause I'm black, boom, surprise, I probably tricked half you fools. Boys, your bodies are perfect. You don't have to be 6'2 ripped and have a six pack to be handsome. It's okay to have a tummy or be skinny with no muscle. It's okay to be short and have acne. Y'all are handsome in your own way. Oh, thank you. But I gotta be honest, short with acne, that pretty much sums me up. My daughter started her period on the bus ride home Home today and a boy a year older than her that she doesn't really know pulled her aside and whispered in her ear that she had a stain on the back of her pants and gave her his sweater to tie around her waist so she could walk home off the bus. She said she was kind of embarrassed and originally said it's okay but the boy insisted and told her I have sisters it's all good. If you are this boy's mom I just want to say thank you and that you're raising him right. We hear so many bad things about today's youth and I wanted to share something positive. Oh you're over here making me smile and junk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. That's just not fair. A dog and a butterfly? Like, how am I not supposed to smile to that? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Mr. Jones, we regret to inform you that your application for the Global Quality Manager has been unsuccessful. We don't normally respond to unsuccessful applicants, but in your case, we made an exception in order to return the five pound note you attached to the references section of your application under the line Elizabeth Wink Wink. Some notes regarding your application? Listing super secret spy work I can't legally talk about as previous work experience won't fool anyone. In the future, you might want to refrain from using sentences like, come on, man, let me be a part of this awesome gig you got going on. Also, eBay feedback isn't a relevant reference. Your attached sketch of an everlasting chocolate bar was unwarranted, absurd, and quite frankly, it scared us a little. We wish you the best in your future endeavors. Sincerely, Alan. Well, I don't know why they didn't hire this guy. He seems like a catch. But while we're here, can we talk about Alan's signature? Like, dude, what is this? I know it's a lot going on in the world right now, but I just found out I'm cancer free. Hey, you know what? That's awesome news, all right? Congratulations on beating cancer. And you know what? The world can be on pause for your celebration, all right? She said, I haven't been carried like this since my wedding day. Oh, aren't they a match made in heaven? Come on, look at this. My cat is cuter than yours. Fight me. 
Haha, -ha, my ruse was successful. Now I have hundreds of super cute animal pictures to look at when I'm down. You stupid idiots fell right into my trap. Update, I had to get my first day of chemo, but I'm still very happy since it's the best thing to do. I celebrated by getting my nose pierced, cause why not? You know what, you look like a boss, and that piercing makes you look even cooler. So now when you go into chemotherapy, you're gonna kick cancer's butt, and you're gonna look like a boss doing it. I had the pleasure of sitting next to Hal on my flight back home. His daughter Pierce was our flight attendant who had to work over Christmas. Hal decided he would spend the holiday with her, so he is flying around the country to spend time with his daughter for Christmas. What a fantastic father. I wish you both a very Merry Christmas. Alright guys, if you own a number one dad thing, you gotta give it away, at least for this holiday, alright? That's only fair. We've been packing clothes to donate and found some of our old clothes from a couple years ago. <laughs> Oh wow, transformation skills 100. I was six years old when my dad told me he would give me $5 if I found a four leaf clover. I spent hours looking for one in my yard. Today I was watering my new trees and saw this. My dad's no longer with us, but I yelled at the top of my lungs, Dad, you owe me $5. <laughs> that is so sweet. Gosh, ah, uh, that that's wholesome. What is the kindest thing a stranger has done or said to you? Oh God, I can't even tell this story and not cry. I used to manage an LGBT bookstores when bookstores were still a thing. One night, a caller says he thinks he might be gay and is considering self-harm. We were not a crisis center, but as long as we're talking, he's safe, right? So I talk to this guy and I answer his questions. I try to be as encouraging as possible, although I'm probably sounding a little frantic and I'm definitely ignoring the four to five customers in the store. This angel of a woman puts her hand on my shoulder and asks for the phone. My turn, she says. And she, this 50-something lesbian, talks to this stranger on the phone. And a line forms behind her. Every customer in the store knows that call, knows that feeling, and every person takes a turn talking to that man. This story comforts me so much to this day. You're gonna make me cry. Is that what you want? You want me to cry? God. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. Ugh. My little girl told me she started her period. She couldn't find her mom, and so she told me first. I don't want my wife to know that I knew first. I don't want to steal that moment away from her. I'm just really happy my little girl trusts me enough to feel comfortable talking about her period with me. He calls me dad at. He's not afraid of my skin. He doesn't think I'm scary. He doesn't reject me when I kiss him. He just calls me dad at. Racism is a learned behavior and we have to stop teaching our children the wrong things. Sincerely, a black man raising a white son in 2020. Hashtag love what matters. Oh, I mean, this is so sweet and I, I don't want to seem like a jerk, but like, what if the baby was racist like the baby's born the dad picks it up and he's like oh my gosh daddy's a black man I, I gotta call the police so obviously you know racism is definitely taught you can't have a racist baby and if you did have a racist baby what do you do you can't return it you can't like throw it away you can't cancel it how are you gonna cancel a baby <laughs> <laughs> it's a stupid thought, but like for real, it would be a terrible mess. Not gonna lie, if Danny DeVito had a cooking show, I would definitely watch it. Heck, I'd probably guest star on it. I'm a baker after all. It's kind of cool to think that someone somewhere is having the best day of their life today. Someone is hearing I love you for the first time today. Someone's gonna get the job of their dreams today. Someone received some kind of good news today. Tomorrow, it could be your best day too, so keep on going. My Nan has dementia, and every time she meets my dog for the first time and falls in love with him over and over again. Like every day she's like, this dog must really like me. It, it acts like it practically knows me. I volunteer for a dog rescue. We love seeing updates of the dogs in their new homes. This one made me smile. Oh, it's a baby Saurus and a dogosaurus. That's adorable. I had a blind professor last semester and I swung through his office to make up an exam. It was a while before I knew he was even in there because he was sitting with the lights off. I finally went in, apologized, and took the exam by the light of a nearby window, which was fine. 45 minutes into dead silence and he panicked and yelled in his booming voice, wait, you can see, before diving across his desk to turn on the lights. I'm sure he was embarrassed, but I thought it was endearing and it highlighted a large aspect of the disabled life that I hadn't previously considered. Sort of relatedly, I once had a professor who was deaf, but she had learned to read lips and speak so she could communicate easily with hearing people who didn't know sign language. One day, she had gotten off topic and was talking a little about her personal life. So then one of the students said, oh, I know, I grew up in Brooklyn too. She stared at him for a long time and said, how did you know I'm from Brooklyn? And he said, you have a Brooklyn accent. She said, I do? And the whole class nodded and then she burst out laughing and said, I had no idea. The school where I learned to speak was in Brooklyn, so I learned by moving my mouth and tongue that way. Oh wow, that's kind of cool. This nurse realized that the last time she met her new co-worker doctor was when she cared for him years ago as a premature baby. 
Oh my goodness, the odds of that happening are so slim. And is it just me or does this guy give off some PewDiePie vibes? Story time. I went to Ali's Donuts this morning and after an hour of waiting in line and getting ready to pay, Sam, from the picture below, jumped ahead of me and paid for the next 150 donuts for people waiting in line. Thank you, Sam. I owe you a beer. Man dresses up in ridiculous costumes to embarrass his wife on Zoom calls. <laughs> What's wrong, honey? You can't expect me to protect the city of Gotham and your reputation at work. I'm Batman for Christ's sake. Dwight has lived in Brooklyn since 1970. He's playing James Brown from his laptop in a speaker for all the protesters in Prospect Heights today. Oh, come on, put some respect on Dwight's name. Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Dwight. I feel good. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. My son was having nightmares after watching The Lion King, so I painted him a portrait of me absolutely starching the evil lion. Yeah, take that, Scar. Long live my fist. Linda says, so there's like eight of us that have lost an eye during these protests, and we're starting to find and talk to each other, and it's kind of hilarious. Three of us are going camping to clear out our heads and just process together. And God bless the internet that makes that possible. So I make cybernetic implants and if any of you want a bionic eye, I'll happily make whatever you want custom. Oh, it's crazy to think that people are actually losing their eyes, but I mean, it's cool of this guy to be giving out bionic ones. Well, everybody, that's our time. I hope you enjoyed this video of r slash made me smile. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like down below and don't forget to press the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of all our easy peasy uploads. I'm your host, David the Baker, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out and three thumbs up.